Hey guys, in this video I'm going to recap on everything we've looked at so far this term. So, let's just start with the, well, not everything, I'm not going to go over the proportions of the body, <coughs> um, but I'm going to go over the, the musculature and the skeleton of the torso so far. So, first thing I'm making a rib cage here, so I just want to make a basic egg shape, right? Proportions of the rib cage uh, relative to the head one and a half heads high or at least from the uh, from the bottom of the tenth rib to the top of the sternum and we do have 12 ribs meaning that it's the the rib cage is a little bit taller than one and a half heads high but the top of the sternum and the bottom of the tenth rib are the landmarks that we use so let's just make sure that it's fairly eggy from the front and the back view but uh, and, and the side view sorry um, but from the side view, our egg is flattened a bit, right this way. So you want to flatten it a bit that way, so it's going to be wider through there. Then we chop the top off the egg. That gives us the first rib, and we want to make sure that we have a downwards angle. So that plane is going to come down. It's going to be a bit steeper than I've got it. Something like that. Right, so that's our first rib. So remember, this is going to be the sternum, so our one and a half heads high from the top of the sternum to the bottom of the tenth rib. So the actual rib cage finishes higher and the two floating ribs go lower through there. Now, we take that distance, chop it in half. And that gives us the length of the sternum through there and gives us where this breaks the sternal angle. So on a male, this is more likely to be around 90 degrees and is more likely to push outwards as well. So on a female, we get, might get that push inwards and on a male, more likely to bow out the other way. Go to the side view, make sure everything's still quite nice and eggy. And then here, the sternum, I'm not going to work the sternum up too much, but Basically, it's made of two bones, right? We have the manubrium here and the gladiolus through there. And that point where the bones meet is called the sternal angle. And in life, we can quite often see a pronounced angle through there. So let me accentuate it a little bit. So that's, that's how it might look in life. So the sternum half the height of the rib cage, and we're saying the rib cage is one and a half heads high, one and a quarter heads wide, by the way, from there to there. And this whole mass is a bony landmark. Right? The pectoral muscles are going to cover that, but that bit left in the center is doesn't matter how big your pecs are. Right? If you have really great big pecs, then the sternum is going to be a depression through there. If you don't, then it won't be, and it'll stick out, and you might even see you know, very common, but you would see like two or three ribs coming off of the surface there. Um, by the way, the sternum on the female, more likely that you'll see a strong sternal angle and more likely that the sternum itself will kind of push outwards through there. So another difference, not very important, but <clears throat> maybe useful to know. Now we have this little plane breakthrough here, right, somewhere like that. That's where the ribs turn to cartilage. So this is all cartilage through there. That's all ribs. No, oh, that's all bone, sorry, through there. So we have a plane break through there that is quite significant when you look at the skeleton. Not so significant in life because through here we've got the abdominals covering this. Through here we've got the, um, the pectoral mass covering that. And then through here we've got the thin mass of the obliques. But one way or another that plane break is covered um, from pretty much all angles. So it does manifest itself on the surface a little bit, but it's not nearly as important as this one back here, right? So we want to look at how deeply buried the spine is in the body. Remembering the spine, we don't want to think of it as being located on the back so much as in the center. And it, you know, it's not dead in the center, but the spine has to, you know, if you want to support the rib cage, you want to support it from the center. So the spine is really curving and moving forward through that. You don't want it like sticking out the back. That would make it much more difficult to support this 
you know, very heavy mass because it's got the heart and the lungs and other things inside them. But this is it. This is all I would really um, look for on the ribcage. There are always going to be more and more ways that we can break it down, but I don't think it's necessary at this stage. Um, <clears throat> I would advise you to keep an eye on where the, the egg is the widest. Um, it wants to be about the eighth rib. And if you think that we're looking at 10 ribs through there and pretty much ignoring the two floating ribs underneath there, then that should give you a rough idea of where, of where you expect to find that widest point. And again, that's one, one and a quarter heads wide. So <clears throat> let's um, attach some hips through here, which we haven't looked at the hips uh, so much yet, and they are much more difficult. So let's start to look at this. So we're saying one head high, one and a quarter heads wide, meaning that if we're looking at a male here, the width of the rib cage and the width of the pelvis want to be pretty much the same something like that, but then it wants to be much narrower from front to back, maybe two thirds of a head, something like that. Now, one thing I think I can push further in my rib cage there is that forward angle. And then the hips here oppose that movement. They're coming backwards through there. And then as I start to refine these, what you want to do is, so I started with a cylinder, that's not going to get us where we need to get to, so let's turn it into a bucket shape. something like that, and then we can start to carve out this middle bit. So this would be a hole that runs right the way through the hips. I'm going to leave it solid rather than carving it out, but um, but yeah, that's what, like that's, that's the baby hole, right? <laughs> Baby's going in that end and then we'll be coming out this other end. But for now, let's just make a hole and then what I wanted to really get your head around here is the movement of the iliac crest because this is where the hips are really noticeable in life. Um, it's not all a bony landmark, by the way. This section is a bony landmark at the aces, and this section is at the pieces going into the sacrum, uh, which we'll look at more and, and much more actually when we look at the legs and things. Um, and this section is covered by the oblique muscle, but, but, it's still important to, to understand because especially in a thin person, even though it's not a bony landmark, it's still going to influence the form. So what I want to look for is how it comes up, 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 and then drops down again. Now at the point where it drops down, it also breaks and turns in towards the body. So you get kind of like something like an S curve through here. You could chop a mass off there and find a plane it runs down the hips pretty much there so it's normally going to be at a more extreme angle however you want to look at it but I would take the hips go a little bit beyond halfway and look for at that point where the crest comes down and where it goes in I feel like th this is um starting the hips with a with a cylinder uh, uh, sorry a bucket shape and then chopping off the front of the hips this is how you'll see bombers conceive it and by chopping off the front that gives you the symphys pubis going to be a little bit lower down, which is the, the, the joining point where the bones touch. Um, and I think that's really useful. I just I feel like what his conception misses out is just allowing that to come up and down. Because um, if you stick with just that cylinder shape, you're not going to get the movement of the iliac crest. And that's where the hips manifest themselves the most, other than at the sacrum through here. So if I refine this a bit more and I'm, you know I'm not going to take this to a super polished finish because just would take a little while but um, but through here this is the simplest pubis right so if I scoop out a bit more here so this would be the hole running right the way through there and so then this is where the bones touch so there is a tiny tiny bit of flexibility in the middle through here especially in females and that gets um, that flexibility starts to open up um, as you're approaching childbirth because because you need all the help you can get you know quite honestly so uh, so yeah there's a little bit of give through there and there's a little bit of flexibility through here where we're hitting the sacrum so what we'll find through here is this is the pieces right so if we follow the iliac crest through we have the aces through here anterior superior iliac spine anterior meaning on the front superior meaning higher iliac spine meaning this is the iliac spine or the iliac crest so it's a, a bump on the crest 
and then that takes us through to the pieces, the posterior superior iliac spine. And we bump through there, and then buried inside of there is going to be the sacrum, which is going to have quite a noticeable curve out through here. See it a little something like that. Now there was another point that <laughs> that I think I was trying to make and I've completely forgotten what it was. So let's just uh, recap. There's the iliac crest. That's what we're interested in. Bony landmark through here. Bony landmark back there. Here, when we look at the obliques, we'll see those softening it off. And then, if we're starting with a bucket shape through here. We chop the front off the bucket, and that gives us this symphys pubis through there. Uh, yeah, I think this is what I was talking about. So we have the flex some flexibility through here. When we spin round, we take a look at the sacrum. See the sacrum? It'd be better to think of the sacrum as part of the spine, really. It is made out of fused vertebrae, so it's really an extension of that. And you know, the little vertebrae that we have down here is kind of what's left of our, of our tail. gets broken a lot you know if you if you fall down on your bum that weak little portion there is quite likely to get broken and there will be a tiny bit of flexibility through there as well especially in childbirth just so those hips can can open up a bit but generally speaking we look at that whole thing as uh, as pretty much one unit now these these forms that we've looked at this is more or less everything that I need you to understand about the hips um, this movement down here Right, th there would be a hole through here. I'm just going to mark that by carving in a little bit. Um, that's the ischium. If you're sat down as you're watching this, you can feel underneath your bum and you'll feel the bone there. That's that's that. Um, on some people, on very relaxed people, uh, the muscle actually, when you sit down, comes away from that and you really sit on the bone, which is, which is healthier. If you do yoga or something like that, they'll often encourage you to pull your muscle or to pull your bum cheeks away from that so that you're sat on the bone through there. And then you would have this here. This is the acetabulum. And this is deep. Its name comes from a vinegar socket, I believe. Um, but this is where the, uh, uh, where the femur is articulating. So basically, you have a trade-off here, right? This is, this is a, a ball and socket joint, like you have um, on the scapula but it, it's much, much deeper than the scapula. And there, there's a lot more muscle around it. Um, that's for strength, right? That's the trade-off through there. So, the, well, the trade-off is you get more strength, but you lose out on mobility. Like you can probably lift your arm above your head, but not many people can do the same with their legs, right? So, so that's the trade-off through there. Um, so very deep socket through here. Um, and this is where, so this is, this is the, like the, the end of the femur. And then when I talk about the greater trochanter, what I'm talking about is this portion of the femur there. So if we were to you know, flesh this out, those would be our femurs through there. This section through there, which generally lines up with the symphys pubis. And that is the halfway point of the body, uh, which you can locate either by finding that, because that's a bony landmark, it's not covered by muscle, it will never be covered by muscle, so you can find it on anyone, even though it takes a little bit of training to find, especially on females. Um, or you can generally find the symphys pubis by, um, there is a mound of fat there, but there's also, that's where the pubic hair starts. So the genitals are gonna be filling in this gap through there. Okay, so. Yeah, I think, I don't think that I'm gonna push this anymore. Of course we could. And you know, th there's all these like little lumps and bumps and they're all there for a reason. You know, like for example, there's one through here that we'll look at when we come to do the legs because this is where the quadriceps are plugging into. So this, we can't find the bone itself in life, but we'll see how significant it is because we get a down plane through there that you can see in life and then an up plane there of the, of the legs. So there are more things that we'll look into. This is the, um, anterior inferior iliac spine, by the way. Anterior superior, anterior inferior. 
Um, and you know, there's a bunch more lumps and bumps that we can analyze through here. But for now, I just I just want you to get the main proportions. I want you to get to understand this movement. Um, and yeah, that's more or less it. You know, understanding the triangle of the sacrum is more or less a bony landmark. The lumbar muscles that we've already studied and that I'll recap on are plugging into there. So that tends to soften off the bone a little bit. Um, and so, you know, I need you to know that the lumbar muscles are plugging into there um, and, and that this triangle is, you can find this, you know, very strongly in life. So, you know, on the sculpture course, we basically, we get the students to conceive of that as a box and then find, the, find that triangle through there and then find the connection of the two ACES points. And, and if you, so basically if you find those two ACES points, then that is going to give you the angle of the hips right from there to there. And then if you're looking at the back of the sculpture, then that is going to have the exact same angle. And then if you connect the ACES to the pieces, that gives you the inclination of the hips. So it's, it's these points that we're looking for, right? When we're trying to, to figure out where the hips are situated in the model, that's where you're going to get your information from. Um, the, all of this is buried in muscle and this, yeah, you've got the gluteus maximus, just this huge muscle plus fat softening all of that. But you would see it if, um, if the leg was pulled out straight through here, then the muscle get pulled tight across there and you might see a little bulge through there that's caused by, by this bone, which is called the ischium. So this is the ischium down here and this is the iliac bone or the ilium, which is why this is called the iliac crest. Okay, and then if we are putting these bones in a position relative to each other, something like that, what I want you to look for is if we had floating ribs on here, then they might add something like that to the mass. And then on the male, the distance between the bottom of the floating ribs and the top of the iliac crest could be like two or three fingers, something like that, very, very close. Um, so keep an eye on that. Most people are going to make that distance too long, which is okay. You just need to be aware of it. Um, you look at like Egon Schiele, for example, he puts that distance round about there, you know, uh, really stretches the figure out, but that's, that's a conscious decision. On the female, that's more likely to be kicked backwards. This is more likely to come wider. And this is much more likely to be narrow through there. So you can see straight away that's what sets up the pear shape, which is also accentuated by the fat, but it's coming from the bones. And then the female hip is much more likely to be angled back. Um, that seems to vary from race to race. Um, in black people, it's more likely to be accentuated than in Asian and Caucasian people. All right, that'll do. That'll do for bones. Um, so in the next video, let's uh, put some muscles over the bones.